Hi everyone, good morning. I'm doing my next uh, section of this book by John C. Maxwell, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And today I'm looking at the next chapter. I've done the reading already. And it's the law of empowerment. So I'm focusing this on doing it for my friends and the people in my life who are connected with me on Facebook and I have new followers now on YouTube as well, as well as LinkedIn. And John Maxwell says, if you're doing something for your friends, you're obviously going to give them your best. You don't want your friends and your family to get hurt. So whatever I share with you here, it's based on my experience as an immigrant to Canada and based on what I have seen and what I have found in the workplace. And he's basically talking here about um, the Ford car, how when Ford developed their car, they wanted to have a car that would be accessible to the ordinary person. And so anybody earning a good salary would be able to afford it, something that would not be too expensive to maintain and large enough for a family, but also that a single person could use it and how they were successful in this. But then over time, he refused to change and adapt. And when his son tried to help him, tried to get him to implement new measures, that would benefit the company and benefit making it more profitable, he wouldn't do that. And the employees landed up hating him. They wanted his son to take over, but unfortunately his son died young. And so those changes never came. So he was, his son was 49 when he died and his name was, but sorry, his name was Edsel. So that's unfortunate because that happens in companies too. And I've experienced it in Canada. I've experienced it in the banks when I was working at CIBC. It's not only me that was telling the banks, like you need to actually renew people's mortgages when they're asking for second mortgages, if they're on contracts or if they're in financial difficulty, because that's when they need the money. And they're like, oh no, we can't do that, that it's, we are risk averse. And so a lot of people landed up losing their homes, not able to keep them, including me. And they say that, oh, there's human rights here and people respect human rights. But actually the opposite is true. When, when push comes to shove, the middle managers don't get the support they need from the executive. That's what happened to me when I was told to take my case to the Human Rights Commission, when I was told to report things to the police, I was told to engage the employment agencies. The employment agencies violated my human rights. They put in a complaint about me to the police when I was telling them to tell the truth about what happened because the employment agencies were at the meetings I had with my executive, where the executive told them we fought for Belinda, we tried to keep her at HSBC and they wouldn't listen. They refused to do it and on top of that, they put in a complaint about me and they sent me an email in writing to say that they will not place me anymore. So in Canada, you can't do that. Even if somebody has a criminal record, if they came here from another country, even if there's been situations that are difficult, you can't refuse to place somebody in a position. And I'm like, you know what? I was trying to help you. I was trying to empower you. I was trying to show you the right way of what you're supposed to do. But obviously you are not willing to listen. So I just said, you know what? Just leave it. <laughs> if you don't want to place me, I'll try to work with other agencies. But this is what they do here in Canada. And when I tell my friends in England, when I tell my friends in America, they're like, you, are you serious? They don't believe me. I said, yes. If I didn't have those emails, I would have no proof. So this is the reality of what you're dealing with when you come here. They don't want to empower you. They don't want you to get to the next level because they're holding on to their own power. That's why 
the owner of Ford wouldn't let his son come up. He wouldn't let him take over. He wouldn't let him bring in the changes that were needed. And as a result, the company suffered. So this is the same thing that's happening in a lot of companies in Canada. They have all these town halls, they have suggestion boxes, they have all these things where they say we want to improve things, we want employee engagement, we want your ideas of how to make the business better. But what happens is that they'll take those ideas, they'll use them, but then they won't empower you. And that's why the companies are failing. I've had so many people that I trained at Teleperformance and they always ask me, they used to always ask me, I was never told because it's my choice. I don't have to empower others. I don't have to give my power away. But because I was so good on the campaigns, they used to ask me, Belinda, we have new people coming in. Would you mind if they sat with you and listened to your calls and watched how you did the chats and the emails? And I used to say, no, no problem, they can sit with me. But what did they do? They turned around and stabbed me in the back, refused to give me a day shift, refused to give me religious accommodation, refused to understand that sometimes I don't understand things the way people here understand them, because I've grown up thinking about things differently. There's a lot I do understand, yes, but there's a lot of things where I'll support the African leaders on things, and they'll be like, oh, well, they're dictators. Well, it's not that different here. We get dictated to, to go and have vaccines that we don't really want. And if we don't tell them, I mean, if we don't want them or we refuse to do it, we get told we'll be let go from our jobs. So how is that different? It's not really different. And the conservatives took a stand on that. They were like, no, people should have a choice because this vaccine is new, we don't know what the side effects are going to be, we haven't tested it, they refused. In France they were told, oh, we'll shut everything down and here you won't be able to go to work, you won't be able to eat at restaurants, you won't be able to. So how is that different? It's not different. And Zimbabwe actually did very well with how they rolled out their vaccines. So. We also have to have people respect where we are coming from, what we are bringing to the table. I did right by Canada. I did what the organizations told me to do. They told me to report it to the police. I reported it. Then it was turned around on me. So it's not a fair and equal society. And when people give away their power, you're supposed to become invaluable to the company. That's the way it's supposed to work. They're not supposed to just let you go without any severance, without any accommodation, without keeping you on the books until they find something else. And I can tell you now, there was an operations manager. Mohammed was my operations manager at Teleperformance. He knew when things were not my fault, he kept me on the books. He made sure I got paid until they found something else for me. And I told them, this is the way you're supposed to do it because this is how it's been done. And they're like, no, we're not doing that. And I'm like, did you speak to HR? They're like, yeah, we're telling HR what we're going to do. We're going to lay you off. So I wasn't valued. And they can tell me till the cows come home that I was valued. I wasn't valued. Because to tell me I speak like an English teacher, it's insulting. It's insulting for me. I was, I lived under the British rule. I was taught to speak this way. It's insulting for people to go off on me on my accent, on different things. I mean, if you have a problem in your life or if people are treating you well, cherish it. Don't take it out on me. Because the way I speak is the way I speak. I don't come off on you and tell you, oh, you sound like a Russian or you sound like this or you sound like that. But that's what happens here in Canada. So this John Maxwell is very important because I was never raised to be like that, to go off on people or to tell people no one's going to do for you what they did for me. Yes, people will do it if they are kind and they are nice and if they have the resources. 
sometimes people don't have the resources to do it or they don't have the time or they don't have what they need to help me. But I know, like with Joe, she didn't have to introduce this to me. They need it. They need the, school, the teams to improve. They need things to change, but they don't want to do it. And then when they lose all their clients, they blame the team. But it's not the team's fault. If we get the best scores, the best results, if we get repeat customers asking for us, how is it our fault? It's the management's fault. Because they don't want people to come up to that next level. So this is not just me saying it. This is exactly the steps that John Maxwell has outlined in here. And this concept of training people and having people shadow you, this is not something that I learned here. I was actually very surprised at how Canada was run when I came here. Because I was like, they don't have apprenticeships, they don't have, like when you join the organization, they expect you to hit the ground running as a contractor. They don't have anybody for you to shadow. Or if they do allow you shadowing, it's one day. How are you supposed to pick everything up in one day? Or somebody shows you something once and they expect you to remember it. Even if you write it down, you are going to make a mistake. You might not get it perfect the first time. That's what TD did to me when I was working for Laura. She told me to set up this town hall. I did it the way I understood it. And then she got the manager to fire me. She said, I didn't want it that way. So do it yourself then. If you are going to come down on a person for not doing it the way you want it. I'm a good executive assistant. I know how to do things. I've supported CEOs. I've supported CEOs not only in Canada, but in England as well as Zimbabwe and South Africa. And it wasn't just me saying that about Laura. It was everybody on her team. They're saying, oh, she expects you to think for you and she doesn't explain things properly. So look at what's happening now to TD. But you have somebody like me that has the skills, that has the education, that knows how to get things done. And yet we can't get those breakthroughs at the VP level or at the senior executive level. Why? Because we tell them and then they don't want to listen. And then this is what happens. So if they don't want to listen, the country is about to implode. It's about to implode. We, those of us that came here from Zimbabwe have lived through this, but they don't want to listen. And why is it? Because they're fearful of losing their own jobs. But maybe if they actually empowered people like me and helped us to get to the next level, then they could go to the next level. I could have said no. When all those managers came to me at Teleperformance and they asked me, Payal and all of them, Belinda, can somebody sit with you because you're the best on our team? I could have said no. I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to teach them. I, I should have said no. When somebody does something with you, it's easier for them. It's not like you just say, oh yeah, you take the ingredients now and go and do it yourself. That's an awful way to do things. We didn't do things like that in Zimbabwe to people. And also when there's a crime being committed, when there's harassment, where there's things that you're being given a directive to take to the police, it's very unfair for the agency to turn around and tell me we're not going to place you anymore. Very unfair. Just the same way when I worked at Randstad, and they kept me at Stericycle. I told them, I'm living on my own. I need to finish by 10.30 or 11. They kept me there until midnight, on purpose. Everybody else went, they kept putting the calls through. I told Randstad. Randstad said, you know what? Don't go back there. We'll try to find you something else. That's the right way to do it. Not to take it out on the person that's doing the work for you, that's doing the job, that's bringing you in the customers, that's treating the customers the right way. It's not fair to me and it's not fair to other workers. And it's not just me saying it. If it was just me saying it, it would be different. 
You go and you look on LinkedIn how many people are saying the same things that I'm saying about the agencies, about teleperformance, about TD. It's not just me. So they do need people like me on the team and they need to value me because I'm not somebody that's doing the company down. I'm not somebody that's telling them this to hurt them. It's the same thing with the clients. If they don't want to see what's happening, then what's going to happen to them is what happened to Credit Suisse. And then it will come out through the journalists and it will come out through different ways. Because people like me are trying to help them. And even the priests at the church know I was trying to help them. But they earning the big bucks, they earning the hundred thousand, they earning the big money, but they don't want me to get to that next level. It's not fair to me, and it's not fair to people that are bringing brought into Canada with the skills, with the education. We didn't, there are people who come in here to work on the farms, to work in the factories, to work in the fields. I didn't come here on that. I came here as a skilled professional, as an executive assistant, with my qualifications, with my degrees, I went to school, I retrained, I got all their qualifications, and still, they'll use me, they'll use my skills and experience, but they won't empower me to get to that next level and to earn the money that I should be earning. And on top of that, they stop me. When there's opportunities to go to England or go somewhere else, they stop it. So it's not fair to me. And I'm praying that I get a break. I'm praying that I get that opportunity because really this is not what should be happening to me in Canada. It's not, and now there's all these undocumented students that have come in and yet the, man, the person that allowed it to happen, he's been placed into a, even more authority. This is Canada. Welcome to Canada. So what is the solution? The solution is that they are supposed to change. They're supposed to fix things and make things right because it's the right thing to do for me and the people that have done right by Canada and Zimbabwe and the places we came from. It would be easy for me to write a book saying how awful it was and what I went through and what they did to us, but I don't do that. I choose to do what Mandela did and Robert Mugabe did. I choose to use my pain to try to help others. But they are too little of a people to see it and to praise me for it. That's the difference. Because if they had any, any integrity, they would have apologized to me and said, hey, Belinda, you know what? We have a good relationship. Let's find something else for you. That's what the agencies would have done. But they didn't.